All right. Uh, yeah. I will end um, maybe um, 12.45 or 12.50, okay? Then we can have lunch, yeah? Yeah, because we have announcement, we have all this, so we take a little bit of time there. But if I don't finish my sermon today, this is the second uh, preaching of this sermon, Better Things. If I don't finish, then we continue next week, all right? Because if we can talk about this, the whole month of January also will be good so that it will stick in our mind, in our hearts. Talk about better things. Let's go back to Hebrews 6 again. And Hebrews 11.40, we read these two verses again. Um, off and on, I will post this in our WhatsApp group. Or maybe I'll post it again in the Facebook so those of you can see that. So you can be reminded of this word, of this word. I talk about better things, yeah? Better things. Um, yes, a lot of prophecy coming out. Mm, people gathered prophecies uh, about 2024 and all of that, even for Malaysia and all. Um, I, I don't say I'm, I, I, I'm against it. I'm open to it, but I don't really depend on it. Because I want to depend on what the Bible says. All right? Prophecy serves as an encouragement, edification, and exhortation. But we don't live by prophecy. Somebody I saw in the Facebook, he put there his meeting. He said, give room for prophecy. Why don't you give room for Jesus in your heart? Or give room for the Bible, the word of God. Instead of you waiting and expecting for prophetic word to come, why don't you open your Bible and read your Bible? Hello? Amen? All right. So uh, why I say this is not that I don't believe in prophecy. I do believe because if you live in the spirit, you know whether the, the Lord is speaking to you through prophetic words. Some people, they just prophesy for the sake of prophecy because they want to prophesy. But I want something that comes from the Spirit of God. And you will have the witness whether that word comes from the Spirit of God. But I want to remind us, don't live by prophecy. Go back to the Bible. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So you live by the word of God. You live by the Bible. By the word, this word. You must have a Bible. You must read the Bible every day. You must read it. This is our priority. Our priority. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will not pass away, Jesus said. The word of God is settled forever in heaven. It's forever. We need that. All right? God told the children of Israel, do not say in your heart, who will go to heaven and bring this word down. He said, don't say like that because the word is near you, in your mouth. That's the word of God. So I know a lot of prophecy coming for the year 2024. Again, don't live by prophecy because we are not fortune teller. We are not horoscope. Yeah, to release the word and you live by this word. Uh, for example, the, the number of this year. Uh, what is again the number of this year? Seven, five, seven, eight, four. Yeah, I don't even go into the, the meaning. You know, maybe I take time to see the, the meaning of five, seven, eight, four. So people try to interpret that. He said, this year is five, seven, eight, four. So this is the Hebrew numeric. This is the Hebrew meaning of five, seven, eight, four. And this is what God is saying in 2024. And this is what happened, what will happen in your life in the church in the year 2024 based on the interpretation of the Hebrew numbers of five, seven, eight, four. As if that you are putting God in the box. God, you must... Operate, God, you must move according to this meaning of this number. So God is limited or you limit God to operate in the meaning of the number. We don't do like that. We let God be God. He's not limited. God can do and will do anything. You cannot bind him. You cannot limit him. So go back in the word. So one of the word that we can see here, 
I this word also I you you never say uh, hear me say that this is the prophetic word for 2024. I put there only the word to live by 2024 and that also depends on you whether you want to believe it or not whether you want to put that in your heart or not right because here it says that uh, Hebrews 6 9 he said beloved we are confident or we are persuaded of better things concerning you yes things that accompany salvation things that accompany means things that follow salvation uh, if you are saved you believe in Christ and all so this promise is for you and the writer of the Hebrew was telling this uh, Hebrew Christian he said we are confident we are persuaded of better things concerning you things that follow salvation the word salvation is soteria uh, it, it, it's an in, all-inclusive word salvation not only means saved but also means delivered or deliverance also means uh, rescued. Also means bless, prosper. All of this word in this word salvation. So these are the better things that follow salvation. Which you can have. you supposed to have. You, you're supposed to live in it. And supposed to be happening in your life. Now you understand that. God did not call you or did not, you did not believe Christ just to be a church goer. There are more than that. There are more things for you than just be a Christian. Uh, some Christians, they don't even bother. They don't even bother about some of these things that God promised that we can have as a believer. They just go to church and for the rest of the week, they don't even bother about God. They, for the rest of the week, they just live by their own life. And Sunday, they go to church. And a lot of people today, even Sunday, they come to church. They don't come to church to worship the Lord or receive the word. They come to church, they listen, and they, need, they want to find something that they can talk about or they can criticize. They'll be, be critical. Oh, the aircon not so cold today. Right? Oh no, freshener in the church. Right? Oh, the sermon today is boring. Oh, the sermon today very long until I fall asleep. You know, they, they find something to talk about, they criticize. But we come to worship the Lord. So, they are more than just being a Christian. They are more. Because the writer of the Hebrew is talking about better things concerning you that follow salvation. And he said, we are persuaded, means we are confident, means we are convinced. We have been convinced, we, we are persuaded that these things must happen in your life. These things must follow you. These things must take place in your life because you are saved and these are the blessings. These are the benefits. This is what God wants you to have because you have salvation in him. Amen. There are more to Christianity. There are more. We need to position ourselves. We need to move towards it. Hebrews eleven fourteen, The second verse, he said, God having provided better things for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Now that is even more powerful. He said these things that God provided for us because we believe in him. This thing will not be completed unless you are there. Why you are here. Why you serve the Lord. Why you believe in Christ. Why you are in church. Why you are in a ministry. These things will not be made complete. Will not be accomplished will not be materialized unless you are there. Hey, hallelujah. That encouraged me to serve the Lord continually and to believe in Him continually because God has provided these things. And God said, I must be here because this thing will not be completed unless I am here. I must serve Him. I must believe Him. 
Why? Because these things will not be completed unless I am here. God using me. God using you. So God having provided. He has provided these things for you. That's why we need to be faithful. Even sometimes things are hard. Continue to trust the Lord. Continue to believe in Him. Say Amen. So I want to go into some of this. I want to share six things to position ourselves. Or six things that we need to do. So that we can experience these better things in our life. In our life. So I want to go into this. Number one. Today. Um, there are six things. So, so maybe we cannot finish this. We continue next week the, other, the others. Uh, what we can cover today. We try to uh, cover it. Okay. Um, number one. What God says you must do, God knows you can do it. Right? You can do it. We have assignment in our life. You know, to, to, to experience better things, you need to position yourself. You cannot just, as I said last week, wait for the durian to fall down. Wait for the fruits to fall down. All right? So some, some, some people... They wait for the durian to fall uh, because the durian did not fall. Uh, they died waiting even the, before the durian fall. Some of them, maybe they died because they wait too long. They become sleepy. So, so the durian fell on their head and they die. Don't wait for the durian to fall. We need to move towards it. We need to work on it. And I mean, it's the reality in life. Nothing is easy in life. Nothing is easy in life. All right? Nothing is easy. We not, you need to work on it. You need to work on it. There is a story about uh, they have this business um, of uh, digging gold. Digging gold. So this guy says, he said that in this industry, he told his workers, he said, in this industry, you know and expect to move a lot of dirt finding gold. So he said, in this industry, you know and expect to move a lot of dirt. So he said, there is no need to complain about the debris, the dirt, because it is part of the task. He said it goes with the job. To be dirty. To remove dirt, you need to get dirty. To get messy. Hard work. So he said there is no need to complain about the debris because it is part of the task. It goes with the job. But what you must keep in mind is moving the dirt is not the job. Finding the gold is the job. Right? So he said we move dirt to get the gold. Or to get to the gold. We are looking for the gold. And that is the reality of life. Nothing is easy. But you need to know what is your job. To get to the Things that you want to do, you need to go through this hardship. Be messy, be dirty and all to get the things that you want. Recently, because of Christmas and all, we want to do barbecue in the house. So, my barbecue stand already broken uh, because it was a, uh, what do you call that, a drama, the theme. So, broken, rusty and all. So I was thinking maybe I want to do a barbecue stand that can last long. So the idea came, I want to do it with cement. So I know a little bit, you know, see people how they do, make cement and all of that. So I just estimate how much we need. So how big is the stand? So we bought with Tia the one bag of cement. 
And then the guy said, you need two bags of sand. So two bags of sand. So, so I make the mold for that. It took me three, four days huh, to make, all right? Uh, actually, in my mind, I feel lazy to do, but because I want a proper barbecue stand, so make it, I make. Shalom was helping me uh, do all this. Then we put the cement. We get dirty, huh? Cement. Some more. The two bags of sand and one bag of cement. I pour it all together and try to mix it. When I tried to mix it and began to shovel it and mix it, in my mind, I said, Alama, ta jadila, ta jadi this one. Because huh, I realized there's so much and you need to shovel it. I, I realized I'm not young anymore. You know, my back began to hurt. So I used a little bit of trick. So I said, Shalom, here. So I make him work. <laughs> I make him also his shovel. So I, we take turn to shovel. Then I have an idea. Uh, instead of doing one shot, we mix it all together. So I take a little bit, you know, a little bit and mix it here, put water, and then pour in the mold. So uh, then she also came and helped, you know. Then another problem said, oh, the floor, the floor is tiles, all right? So the cement sink and also every time wash, every time wash, every time wash. A lot of works during that time to get that tea. But after three, four days, Finish all, touch up a little bit, and the uh, barbecue stand completed, and we have good barbecue the other day. Huh? Praise the Lord. So you need to be messy, dirty, hard work, all right? Hard work. But finding the goal in life can be hard. Now this is talking about everything in our life, yeah? Job, family, right? Finances and all. Finding the goal is hard. But it will become easier of you if you are focused on the goal. So you need to focus on your calling. You need to be focused on your mission. The things that you want to get it done. For example, family. Uh, those of you who are working here. You know, your family is away from home. You need to focus on what is your goal. Why you are here. Why you are working here. Why you leave your family in the Philippines and you come over and work here for a few years. But if you come and work here and then here you just want to enjoy every month. Some Filipinos here every weekend they go picnic, they go partying, they go drink, you know, all these friends, you know, and they finish their money, they go shopping. At the end of the month, they don't have money. They ask cash advance from the boss. Always cash advance, cash advance, cash advance. At the end of the day, there's no more salary to take. They work to pay their debt now. They work to pay the cash advance now. There's no more. And they always complain. But you need to remember. Think about the goal. Think about the purpose, the calling, the vision, the mission. What you want to accomplish. Right? To save money and all. Uh, another problem with Filipinos, they work here, you know, a lot of, uh, they become like a charity organization. All right. So family from Philippines say, oh, I'm sick, uh, clinic, oh, I'm uh, no rice or, or no food or no this and no that. The mother-in-law called, the father-in-law called, the grandfather, the grandmother, the great, great, great grandfather calling also. So the charity here always send money and send money and send money and send money. Hallelujah. Then at the end of the day, no more. No more money. You need to focus on the goal. There's a man named Zig Ziglar, quite a famous um, guy. He says like this, life is hard. Life is hard. Listen, yeah. Life is hard. But if you will be hard on yourself life will be infinitesimally easier it's true life is hard but if you will be hard on yourself means you're willing to be hard on yourself you're willing to work hard in all then life will be infinite this is a new word for me infinitesimally 
easier means become very very easy like piece of cake it means paying the price you pay more price if you pay more price then life will be much easier it's the same thing in a ministry i can preach like this because of what i do the amount i spend with the word the study and all of that that's why i can preach like that the the, the price that you pay the, the the time that you invest in your life right now god does not make our life always easy but God knows that you can do it because what God asks you to do he knows that you can do it Philippians chapter 4 13 Paul says I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me I can do it. say I can do all things through Christ I can do it Right? So if God asks you to do something, he knows you can do it. Only us, sometimes we think we cannot do it. First John 4 verse 4, little children, you are from God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. You have God in you. You have Jesus in you. And he says Jesus in you is greater than he that is in the world. He's greater than all problems, trials, and everything that you face in life because Jesus is in you. He is greater than anything else. You know, just to encourage you with the word. Zechariah 4, 6. When they try to rebuild the temple, when they come back from captivity, they experience a lot of opposition, a lot of problems, you know, internal problem, external problem. They experience that. So they stop building. But then the word of the Lord came and encouraged them. Even come to this uh, governor, this Zerubbabel. He said, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says so if we just position ourselves and let God rise up within us, knowing that he is with us, knowing that he will be with us to help us to accomplish what he asks us to do, we can do it. Amen? You can do it. Whatever you go through today, you can do it. In this year, 2024, you can do it. Why? Because God is there with you. Right? God believes in you and God knew that you can do it. Now, this is a truth. God never asks us to do more than we can. If you receive a calling, if you receive assignment, if you receive a task from God, even though sometimes you feel you are overwhelmed, you feel like, wow, it's so big, God is so big. But why God is giving you that task and assignment? Because God knows you can do it. Amen. So God never asks us to do more than we can. We often think we can do less than we can. The problem is here. We can do a lot of things actually. But only our mind tells us. We cannot do it. But actually there's a lot of things that we can do. A lot of things that we can do. Many times, sometimes I want to do something. I feel like, wow, uh, it's hard. It's difficult. Actually a lot of things to do and all. But then when I try to do it, then after I've done it, I said, hey, it's quite simple actually. Why I feel like it's difficult and hard. Why? Because it's my mind telling me, oh, it's hard. Oh, it's difficult. Oh, this cannot be done. This cannot be done. Actually, it's your mind telling you, you cannot do it. But actually, you can do it. Especially when we are God's children, we are filled with the Holy Spirit. We have all the promises in the word of God. And God is with us. We can do it. Say, we can do it. You can change your life, actually. Why 
some people they do not progress some people they don't go anywhere why because they do not allow themselves to break through beyond the wall of their mindset you have to break it and said i can do it um i i was struggling in the ministry especially to wake up early and pray and read the word i was struggling because i always think in my mind oh i'm tired i always think in my mind hey too early why wake up so early too early too early too early so for years in the ministry even though i'm serving the lord yes i have anointing i have gifting and all but i'm struggling with that time To learn to wake up five o'clock in the morning, why? Wow, it's a struggle, hard. Why? Today I found out actually it's my mind. Because the body always say you're tired, heavy, still dark. When you wake up in the morning, still dark. Still dark. Sleep again. Wait until a little bit bright, then you wake. That's a mindset. That's a mindset. Today I challenge myself to wake up four o'clock in the morning. Right? Then I realize why wow, it's good. I read. I start reading four o'clock in the morning. After I read, while reading, I clear the kitchen. While reading, I cook my rice or I cook their rice too. While reading, sometimes I do cook. And now in the house we have schedule, so praise God. I cook once a week only. But I still can cook, even though I wake up early. So I learned to wake up four o'clock, because I have a challenge. I want to read more. That's Mila. I don't say you follow me, but you think about yourself. So I wake up early in the morning, four o'clock. After six o'clock, seven o'clock, sending my baby to school and all. I don't feel tired. But I accomplish more. I do more. It's here. We only think we cannot do. Or we do less than we can. Actually we can do more. I want to challenge you with this. If you want to see change and transformation in this year 2024. I want to go into the second one. Because we have six. Huh? So... If we take two every Sunday, I think the whole January we talk about this better thing. Number two, you are governed, you are dominated by what you think about yourself. It's coming to yourself. It's hard to, un to, to experience the better things that God provided for us. Oh, it's very hard to experience the better things that accompany salvation. If you are governed, you are dominated by what you think about yourself. When you fail to live up to the potential your creator designed you for, you are living in bondage. A lot of people, they are bound. A lot of people, they are living under this bondage. Something that is other than God's best is determining your destiny. How many of you believe that all of us have a great destiny? Amen. We all have great destiny. Actually, we all are great men and women of God. We all are celebrities. We all are famous people. We all are anointed people. We all can be great pastors. We all can be great preachers. We all can be great politician, businessman, we can be great. But the problem is we limit ourselves because of our thinking. So we need to break this thinking. There is a problem called self-talk. 
That's a devil. That's a demon. There's a problem. Self-talk. You talk to yourself. I cannot do this. Oh, it's hard for me. Self-talk. Oh, it's impossible. Oh, it's not for me. This is for somebody. And because of this problem, this self-talk, we deprive ourselves from reaching the potential that God has designed us to be. Amen. Self-talk. Most people, for most people, this, this is very important, yeah? For most people, known bondage, known bondage is more comfortable than unknown freedom. I repeat it again. For most people, known bondage is more comfortable than unknown freedom. For example, people who love to drink and get drunk. When you tell them, you said, stop drinking, stop this lifestyle, and be free from this lifestyle because you can save a lot of money, you can take care of your health, you can avoid problems and sicknesses. But they said, I enjoy drinking. I feel free when I drink and drunk. I feel happy when I drink and drunk. But the unknown freedom, when you stop drinking, the freedom that you experience, which you have not known, can be more blessing, can be more beneficial than you stay in your bondage, become a drinker. People who smoke, that is bondage. For them, smoking is more comfortable. That lifestyle is more comfortable than be free from smoking. But the unknown freedom that you can have that you have not known if you stop smoking, the amount of money you can save, the happiness of your wife when you sleep with her, he smell your mouth with good smell, not smoke smell. Or your children. The freedom that you have not known. The freedom from addiction. The freedom from the, this craving. You know, after eating must smoke. After this thing must smoke. The freedom that you will experience is much, much better than living in that comfortable bondage. Hey. Sometimes when you talk about Wrong relationship. So many people, they feel comfortable in the wrong relationship than the unknown freedom when you have good relationship or healthy relationship or no relationship at all. You are governed, even dominated by what you think about yourself. Hey, hallelujah. I was challenged when I stay with my pastor friend in Tenom. I sleep in their room downstairs. Feel so cold because the room is small and the aircon is 1.5 horsepower and it directly to you like the aircon is here. You're sleeping here. <laughs> but two o'clock in the morning, I heard him walking up and down in his garden, walking up and down. He was praying. So he said, Pastor, you can join me. If you wake up early, you can join me. But I said, two o'clock, I sleep. <laughs> I wake up only five o'clock. <laughs> but I was challenged. Then he was telling me, he said, Pastor, that's my life. Every day, I wake up 2 a.m. and I start praying. And he is 60... I think 62, 63, I think. That challenged me. He has built that. We don't let ourselves bind us and keep us in bondage. 
because of this south talk. Proverbs 23.7 As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. If you think you are like that, then you will be like that. If you think you cannot get up early, you will always get up late. If you think you cannot cook rice, you will never cook rice. If you think you do not know how to cook dishes, you will never learn how to cook dishes. If you think you cannot read the Bible more than one chapter a day, you will never read the Bible more. If you think you cannot pray long, you will never learn to pray. If you think you cannot be a good husband, you will always be a bad husband. If you think you cannot be a good wife, then you will not be a good wife. If you think you are dumb, then you become a moron. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So let us think that we can do what God tells us to do. Say amen. In Numbers 13, I'm looking at the watch. Uh, let me finish this still a little bit more. Numbers 13, when they were asked to spy the land, 12 of them, but the, when they came back, the 10 gave a bad report. Uh, Numbers 13, 33, this is the report of the 10. He said, there we saw giants, <coughs> the sons of Anak, <coughs> which come of the giants. And we were in our sight as grasshoppers, so we were in their sight. So the 10 came, came back and gave the report. They gave a bad report. Why? Because they said, we saw giants, the sons, the children of Anak, and like grasshoppers in our eyes, so are we in their eyes. We are so little. This giant is so big. I ask you a question. Who was saying this? Who was thinking this? Who was saying this? That they are like grasshoppers in the giant's eyes. Who was saying this? Huh? The Israelite, the ten, the ten spies, twelve of them. But the ten, the majority, says, because that is what they saw, and that is what they thought, that we were grasshoppers, as grasshoppers in the giant's eyes. Then when I read again, when I ask this question, yeah, it's true. The giant did not say anything. He said, hey, you come here in our land. You are so little. You are like grasshoppers in our eyes. We eat you up. The giants did not say it. They are the one who said because they saw and that's what they thought. We cannot overcome. We cannot conquer the land because the giants, they are big. They are strong. We are small. We are not able. We cannot. Don't go in there. We all will die. But the giants did not say it. Only if I use my mind, imagination, I think, if I think, lah, I think the giant was saying, hey, the Israelites are coming to destroy us. We are shaking now. We are going to die now. They are going to conquer our land because their God is with them. Their God destroyed Egypt. Their God destroyed the kings of Og, the kings of Bashan, in all of this nation. Now they are coming to us. Maybe the giants were saying that. But the Israelites says, we will die. We are little. Because that's what they saw and that's what they thought. They focus on that. But in Numbers 14, verse 8, to nine, the two guys, the minority, Joshua and Caleb, they tell the people in verse 8 and 9, Numbers 14. They told them, hey, if the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it us. <coughs> a land which flows with milk and honey. Only rebel not ye against the Lord. Neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bred for us 
Their defense is departed from them as the Lord with us. Fear them not. So the ten says, cannot. They are so big. We will die. We are so little. But the two said, no, their de defense is departed. They are bread for us. Why? The ten saw the giants and make them to think negatively. But the two, Joshua and Caleb, when they look at the giants, they saw God behind it bigger than the giants. He said, God is with us. They are bread for us. So if you think about yourself, this self-talk and all, and you fail to see situations through God's perspective, then you will live in defeat. Romans 8, 37, 39, Paul says, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through Christ, through him that love us. I don't have to read all things, but in 2 Kings 6, 15 to 17, 2 Kings, the story of Elisha, Elisha, because he gave the report concerning the plans of the Syrians to the, the king of Israel. Now the Syrian came and looked for Elisha. So they came to Elisha's tent in 2 Kings 6, verse 15, 17. 15 said, when the seven, because when this army, so many armies surround, surrounded the tents of Elisha. So they came to him. With his armies. And when the seven, verse 15, the seven of, of the men of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, an host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, verse 16, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Wow, I like that. The servant saw so many Syrians army surrounded them. The servants saw the Syrians army. But Elisha saw God's army. It depends on where you look in your situation. We need people that see God all the time. Even though the problem is there. When you have problem, when you have situation, look at God, not your problem. In this year 2024, learn to look at God, how big God is, how mighty, how powerful God is, then your situation. Verse 17, Elisha prayed, said, Lord, I pray you, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire. Round about Elisha. Wow. That's powerful. I pray that God will open our eyes to see God in our difficult moment. Amen. And lastly, the rest we continue next week. 2 Timothy 1.7. It's getting better, yeah, every week. 2 Timothy 1.7, he says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I mean a sound mind, a mind that can think, a mind that sticks to God, a mind that see God, a mind because you see God, you see the possibility, you see the miracle, you see the power, you see positive because you have a sound mind. Church, the better things that God provided for us. Learn. Learn. What we learn today is what God says to you, you must do. God knows you can do it. The second one is you are governed, dominated by what you think about yourself. So it's time to change. It's time to change. Change your mind. Change your thinking. You have heard the word this morning. Amen? Heard the word this morning. So let's believe God. 
and trust him as we continue next week. Praise God. Let's all stand and we want to pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Can we lift our hands to Jesus? He is alive. He is real. He is real to you. He is real to me. Church, listen. It's time to progress. It's time to change. It's time to think that you can. You can change. You can be better. You can do more. You can progress. You can excel. You can succeed. You can have breakthrough. You can have miracle. You can be used by God. You can. You can. You can. You can. Come on, say, I can. And the other thing is, you need to be delivered from the spirit of self-talk. The problem, don't let yourself talk to you. Let the word of God talk to you. Learn to follow God's word. Listen to God's voice, not your self-talk. Because if you lis listen to yourself, everything is negative. I cannot, I cannot, uh, impossible, impossible. It's hard, it's difficult. That is, that is what the self will talk. But listen to God's word. You can do, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. We can. We can progress. We can change. You don't have to be the same. Make sure, church, make sure, make sure this year you will be different. This year you change, 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 change this year. You must change. You pay the price, invest, sacrifice, put extra effort, extra effort. Change. Because God has prepared better things for us. And he wants you to experience that. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for you are with us. Thank you for speaking to us today. Thank you for your word. Thank you. Lord, we want this year to be a different year for us. A year of change, a year of progress, a year where we will increase. But we will position ourselves. We will change. We will transform. Lord, in Jesus' name, we will hear your voice, your word. Not ourself talk to us, but you. We thank you. We pray that you will let us experience all the better things that you have provided for us. As we do all of this thing to position ourselves and to move towards the better things that you have prepared for us. Thank you, Lord. I pray that you will touch everybody, touch every family. I pray for blessing and miracles. I pray for your power to touch every lives, every uh, family here. That this year we will change and experience. Help us, Holy Spirit. Help us. Blessed Holy Spirit, help us. Lord, we give our life to you. Thank you for today. You bless us throughout this week. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Be, be seated for the offering. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's, let's collect the offering today. Uh, give cheerfully. Give uh, lavishly to the work of the Lord. God bless you. Remember your tithes and your offering as uh, what Brother Chia has shared uh, earlier. All right? Praise God. Who, who pray for the offering today? Me? Is my name? Okay. It's my name. All right. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. Pray that you bless the offering. Again, we pray that you bless the church with finances. And as your people give because of their uh, faithfulness and love for you, Bless them also in their family. Lord, let them experience abundance and prosperity. Thank you so much for this church. Lord, we love this church. We want to support this church. We want to give to you for this church. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Let's give to the Lord. Those of you who are watching through the Facebook Live, you also can give uh, offering online. You can transfer your offering to the number account in the screen. Uh, that's the, ch the church account number. All right. God bless you. Thank you for giving. Thank you for supporting us. And thank you for being part of this ministry. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord.
You can consider yourself dismissed and um, enjoy the lunch. If you are not in a hurry, enjoy the lunch with us. God bless you. We'll see you next Friday and next Sunday. Amen.